Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Topaz Labs have updated Photo AI to version 1.3.7. In today's video, we're going to take a look at what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Topaz Labs Photo AI. As you can see, I have it open. Let's open an image up into it. On my desktop, I have an Icon RAW file. We'll open that up. And for those of you not familiar with Photo AI, when you open it up an image into it, it has something called autopilot mode. When you open an image up into it, it will automatically examine the image and determine what it needs. For this image, it has determined that it needs noise removed and it needs to be sharpened. Now it's not rendered yet. In the lower left hand corner, you have a progress bar and it is now rendering the image. Usually you wait till it's done then you get a before after by clicking on it before after. You could all also go down to this little eyeball and click on it. There's before and there's after. Now for this specific image, I'm going to zoom in a bit. So I'm going to go over here to the magnifier and I'm going to zoom into 200%. You can reposition it by uh, just clicking on the image and dragging, or you could go to the navigator window in the top right hand corner and navigate that way. Whenever you zoom in, zoom out, or push the image around or use the navigator window to focus on a specific part of the image, you have to wait for it to re-render. So it has re-rendered and you can see that it did a nice job of removing the noise and sharpening the image. There's before and there's after. Okay, so really it's always done that. <laughs> What's new? Well, as far as the noise removal section, nothing has changed there. That's the same. It still has the normal and strong methods, strength and detail sliders for each. The sharpen model or the sharpen part is a bit different. If I roll this open, you can see that there's four different models, standard strong, lens blur and motion blur. Now in the past, Lens blur and motion blur by default weren't here. All you had were standard and strong, but you could put lens blur and motion blur there by going to preferences and flipping a switch. And if you flip that switch, then they would appear there. But autopilot would never use lens blur or motion blur. Autopilot would only use standard and strong, even if lens blur or motion blur were there. We're there. What's different with this version is they're there period. They're not even in preferences anymore. You can't even remove them if you wanted to. So they're here. Also, autopilot may use them if autopilot determines that one of them will be the best sharpening method. So that is new. Uh, for this specific image, it determined that it needs standard sharpening. Now, one thing that hasn't changed, in my opinion, it's only right about which model to use half of the time. I found that I've often been able to get better sharpening by coming in here and changing it from what it determined it needed. Now it says it needs standard with a strength of 36 and a clarity of one. So I'll just try the others and I'll go to strong. You can see strong has a single slider, a strength slider. That looks pretty good. We'll go to lens blur that has two sliders, uh, strength and clarity. And then we have motion blur and we'll go there. And just for the sake of expediency for this video, let's say motion blur is the one I choose. I can get a before after there's before and there's after I won't move the slider sliders. Now with autopilot, it automatically found the subject. Just double check that it actually did find the subject. All you need to do is hover over this part right here. You can look up at the navigator window so you could see the entire image and you could see that it found the baby gorilla fine. So that looks good. Um, Usually the subject detection is very good in uh, all Topaz Labs products, including Photo AI. So you usually won't have a problem there at all. Now for this image, it has determined that there isn't a person in it. So it isn't a low resolution uh, image where it needs to recover the face of a person. Obviously, first of all, it's a full resolution image. It's not low resolution. And obviously there's not a person here. Uh, enhanced resolution, uh, it is not a low, a low resolution image, so that's not needed here. Plus, for this version, there has been nothing changed as far as recover faces, enhanced resolution, and upscale is concerned. Now, what's different, though, is in preferences. Let's go to Photo AI Preferences. On a Mac, it's under the Topaz Photo AI menu. Preferences on a PC is under the Edit menu. Open up Preferences. On the left, you have two tabs. The top general tab, first of all, AI processor. You have three choices, auto, CPU, or GPU. In my case, it doesn't say GPU. It says the exact graphics processor I have in this computer. 
AMD Radeon Pro 5700 XT, whatever. Doesn't matter what it says. Yours is probably different. Why this is a nice option to have in preferences, if you find that Photo AI is crashing or locking up or running exceptionally slow, go here and change this to whatever it's at. If it's on auto, try it at CPU. See if the problems persist or if they improve. Uh, if it's persisting, go and just use the GPU and see if the problems persist or or alleviated. That way you could hopefully get a better experience when you're using Photo AI. Um, I found with my computer, auto is fine. Lens corrections. By default, this will be on. If you're using Photo AI as a plug-in, let's say in Lightroom, you may not want this on because you're doing lens corrections in Lightroom. So it's up to you. In this case, I'll leave it on. Uh, close the image after saving. By default, if I go over here in the lower right-hand side, now it's grayed out now, we have save image. If I save the image, it will save the image, then it's just going to sit there with the image still opened up into Photo AI. I kind of like it to close right down. So I'm going to turn this on and images will close after they are saved. That's what I prefer. So I've taken that off the default setting. Show help prompts. Um, by default, that'll be off. But if you want like recommendations to your workflow as you go, turn this on. You can see help prompts are enabled. When relevant, props will appear with workflow suggestions. I keep that off. I don't need that on. If you find that you move these around and you just want back the way it was by default, you could click this little backwards arrow and it will reset everything. Now, autopilot, this is where it's a bit different. If we go here at the top, default subject type for a subject detection. Uh, by default, it will say default. That's where it's just going to automatically try to determine what the subject of the image is. If I roll that open, you can see, though, that you have the option for portrait. So if you're a portrait photographer, it might run a little faster if you just tell it, hey, this is a portrait image. Just find the people in it, and that's the subject. Otherwise, if you're a landscape photographer, just tell it you're a landscape photographer. There's really probably not a subject, but if you find a subject, it's going to be somewhere in the landscape, or just... Don't do any subject, automatic subject detection at all. Put it on none. I'm going to leave it at default. Face detection. By default, Autopilot will detect faces when an image is loaded and automatically apply face recovery to low quality faces. So if you have a really low resolution image or you have, let's say, a full resolution image, but the person is really small in that image and their face is, you know, pixelated a little or has a lot of grain in it because it's such a small part of the image. Um, you use auto, it automatically will find that face and will automatically use face recovery if it's it, what it determined is low quality. You could roll that open though, and you could just say, well, only if it's the subject of the image. So periphery people, let's say in a street photography shop, uh, shot, it won't try to improve their faces, or you could do none, or you could do all. That means every single face it finds, it's going to uh, try to fix uh, all faces, regardless of whether it's low quality, high quality or not. And you have this default face recovery strength. If you find that it seems to be making the faces of people in your photos look like mannequin faces, then you're going to want to pull this down. If it's not doing a good enough job, in your opinion, push it up. Now, in this case here, I'll just leave it on auto. Okay. Now, sharpen. This is where it may be a little bit uh, confusing. How do you want autopilot to determine when to turn on the sharpen section? Now for this image, it turned it on automatically. Well, by default, if it determines the image is either medium blurry or very blurry, it will automatically turn on sharpen and sharpen the image. Well, let's say you want it to always sharpen, like even if it determines the image is just slightly blurry, well then go here and just click on low soft as well. So if the image is slightly soft now, or if it's just a little blurry, medium blurry, or if it's very blurry, it's automatically going to turn on sharpen and sharpen the image. On the other hand, maybe you don't want it to sharpen at all because you use another application for sharpen. Turn all those off, just click on them. If you only want it to sharpen the most blurry of your images, just click high. Or you could go back to default, or you could have all three. I'm going to click all three and see how that works out for me. I'll use it for a while and determine whether or not I think low, medium, and high for autopilot sharpen is the way to go. Then I'll adjust accordingly. 
auto upscaling. Uh, by default, autopilot will upscale small images from 1.5x to 4x to a maximum of 12 megapixels with enhanced resolution. So if I put in a smaller, low resolution image here, autopilot will automatically upscale it either 1.5 to 4x. It's, it will determine which to use and it will make sure that it's no larger than 12 megapixels in size. Or I could set the output size myself. I could either use a scale like 2x or 4x or 6x, or I could go over here and change this to width, and I could put a specific width in, or I could go here and put a specific height in. So it's your choice. I'll just keep it on scale and um, enhance small images, or you could choose none. It will never auto upscale ever. So autopilot is, is taken out of the equation as far as upscaling is, is, is concerned, and you'll do it manually if you need to do it. I'll just keep it enhanced small images like that. And you have the option, of course, to reset it to the default settings. When you do any adjustments or any changes in preferences, make sure you click save. Now, um, this image, let's say I'm done. Now, I actually did this one annoyance with it. If you just move it a little bit, you have to wait for it to re-render. There's before and there's after. I really haven't thought too much about this. I really didn't go in and uh, move any sliders to try to remove noise a little better. I didn't try to pick the best sharpen model and then adjust the sliders accordingly for that specific model. I just chose this one. Let's click save. There's no real changes here. Um, you do have the option to save it to JPEG, PNG, TIFF, or DNG. I'm going to keep it at DNG. If you pick preserve input format, if you put in a raw file, it's going to save it as a raw file, but it won't save it as the manufacturer raw file. This was a, a Nikon raw file, dot .nef. If I put preserve input format, it's not going to save it as a dot .nef. It's going to save it as a dot .dng. It's just another format for a raw file. So uh, just be aware of that. Um, if you input a JPEG, it'll save it as a JPEG. If you put a TIFF, it'll save it as a TIFF. I want to save it as a DNG just automatically like that. It doesn't matter. I'm going to save it to the desktop and file naming. I'll just use the default settings there and we'll click save. Now it's going to save it. Now because I changed that one option in preferences, whereas by default it would just sit there with the image open, what you'll see then now, because I changed that one setting, it's going to actually close that image down. At least it should. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, but hopefully if there's not a bug, we'll close the window. And you can see that we're right back to the beginning. So it did close that image down. Like I said, by default, it will have that image still sitting there. So that's it. That's everything that's new and exciting in the latest version of Topaz Labs Photo AI version 1.3.7. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.